I'm starting a new painting, and this one's a commissioned piece of a little Bernese Mountain Dog puppy. And I'm trying something different. I have heard that there are those who will start their oil painting in acrylic first. So what I've done is I've laid down just a really simple black and white underpainting with a bit of a background. And I'm going to see what it does when I start oil painting on top. I have a suspicion that it's going to have been a waste of time, but I just have always wanted to give it a try, so we're going to see what happens. You may wonder what I've been doing in the background, and I really don't know what I'm going to do in the background. Uh, in the reference that I was given, the dog is sitting on a bed, and I really don't want to do that, so I was thinking just kind of like a sky idea, but I felt that the acrylic was a little bit too turquoise and a little bit too plastic looking, so I'm trying to soften it. So we'll see how that all turns out in the end. As I suspected, uh, the black acrylic I'm finding too dark because when you look at black fur, it really has a hint of blue in it. And when I paint with oil, I never use black at all. I just use my uh, ultramarine blue and right now I'm using uh, burnt sienna and that makes a nice black substitute. So I'm having to go over most of it because I just feel like this black is too dull and it just stops the eye, it doesn't have any depth. So it might be that I really am going to be painting over everything I did in acrylic, but it's always good to try new things. So I think it was a good experiment, even if I don't end up having any of it left when I'm done. As I tell my students, when you're at this stage, don't worry too much because you can always go over something. I've got some things that I don't like on this, but I can bring that out in the end. So right now, you're just laying in your broad colors. I'm not really adding too many details. So hopefully this will start looking like a puppy real soon. I forgot to turn the camera on for the last um, hour or so. As you can see, I'm beginning to uh, refine a few things. I'm not particularly happy with um, some of the colors I'm using on the dark areas because they're a little too flat. So I'm gonna need to work on that. And I'm going to need to also uh, get the eyes to look a little more sparkly. The one on the left is a little more done than the one on the right. The reference photo I was given doesn't have true colors for the color of the eyes. They look blue in the photo, and I know they're not. They're actually brown. 
So I'm going to need to make up some um, colors in that and make it a little bit truer to the actual dog colors. I apologize for the sound of the fan in the background, but it's gotten hot and I need to keep that on so I don't pass out. Also, I thought I had recorded a whole video between this one and the last one, but evidently I forgot to push the button. So I'm probably not going to record any more time lapse uh, because what mostly I have to do now is just to refine areas. It's three quarters done, maybe a little bit more than that. So it might look done in the video a little bit more than it does in reality. But if you look especially at the lower half, I'm just sort of putting in broad colors right now and I have to refine that a tiny little bit more. I really do enjoy doing these tiny little toe beans. They're really fun. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about color because on these toe beans, or actually they're pads, you don't want to use bright pink, so you have to soften that. So I actually mix my red with some orange and quite a bit of white in there. And sometimes you have to soften it with a little bit of a complement. So if it's pink, the complement then for red would be green. Um, I didn't actually have any green on my palette, so I made a little bit of green substitute using, of course, my blue and my yellow to soften that color. This is also true when you are making the orange color. If you try to just use orange straight out of your tube for an animal color of orange, it's going to look like a cartoon. It's gonna be far too bright. So in this case, I've mixed my yellow and orange together, and then I've softened it actually with violet. I realized that violet and yellow are the true complements, but in this case, because it's a yellow orange, it really works quite well just to cut it. This is also true if you're painting a person with blonde hair. You would cut that yellow with the violet and that works quite well. I've also mixed a little bit of white in it because you don't want it to be too bright. Uh, so I need to refine the bottom part and I'm still not absolutely, absolutely sure what I'm gonna do with the background. I think I'm just going to make it uh, support the dog but not be anything. I think I might make the bottom part look a little bit like cloth because in reality he is sitting on a bed. So we'll see how it all comes out and I'll probably just show you the end results uh, when I get it finished. I'm going to call it done. There are always more things you could do I suppose but I think I am finished. You can always tell I'm finished because I have added my signature. So just a closer look See, I've tried to make the background of the fur soft so that it doesn't look like just little hard pin edges because it is a very furry puppy dog. So I hope that the people I did it for like it and I hope you enjoyed the videos.